he's distracted by social media. <laughs> I'm waiting for the call. It's been 354 days, 8,496 hours, 509,760 minutes, and I miss her every single day. She was my role model, my mentor, my moral compass, my friend. She was my mom. She passed away at the age of 92. She had a very, very full life. She never wanted to leave the party, but when she decided it was time, she made a very quick exit, only four weeks. It was kind of a shock to all of us. So much of who I am today is a result of who she was, what she taught me, both verbally, and what, how she conducted herself, so her actions. She taught me about patience, a sense of humor, commitment, respect, and love. And I'd like to share a few stories about her this morning. You would think that this woman who was an only child would have been overwhelmed by the fact that she was going to raise a family of 12 children. Yes, 12 children. Mom made it seem effortless. She managed this, her family was in her entire life, and she gave 100% of everything to her family. And there was the first lesson, some patience. When you have 12 children, a rather demanding husband, two grandmothers that expect you to do everything for you, eight spouses, 23 grandchildren, 14 spouses for the grandchildren, and 35 great-grandchildren, that's a lot of people. She had 92 people as a result of her union with my dad. That took a lot of patience when they all came to that, the family home for a party. They called it the McMansion, our house that we grew up in had 15 rooms and seven bathrooms. These kids came in through the back door, ran out the front door, they were up the back stairs, down the front stairs, down through the basement, ringing bells in the house because they had uh, buzzers for the maid service. They had a blast in this house. And I never heard my mom say, stop, slow down, go outside. And the reason was mom was present with somebody else in the family. She loved every moment that her kids were home. And she would give them 100% of her undivided attention. That was the most important thing to her. And so when you're with your family, are you patient and listening and present? Or are you on your cell phone? or on another technical device, or watching football, and you can't get away from the table fast enough. Mom had a great sense of humor. She was really terrific with these one-line responses that she had at exactly the right time. It was just a few months before she passed away, and I was over up in New York taking care of her for the weekend, and we were at my sister's house for dinner. And Mom had gotten into the habit of like wandering at night, and my sister was dead tired that night and really wanted to go to bed. And mom was wandering, looking for the kids in the back room. And Kathy's relaying this story at the dinner table to my brother-in-law and myself. And mom looks kind of like, you know, she's in her other world somewhere. And as Kathy is doing this story, she finishes about how exhausted she was. And out of nowhere came, let me tell you something. I spent plenty of nights sitting up waiting for all of you kids to come home and now you're all going to wait until I'm good and ready to go to bed. <laughs> and so she was real quick to jump right back in that conversation and give us her opinion on us staying up late. She kept a marriage together for 50 years with the same man. Mom would get up in the morning, come down and get breakfast ready for everybody, get us off to school and work, and then her day began. Cleaning to do, laundry to do, shopping to do, dishes, Scrubbing the floor on her hands and knees is how she conducted herself and lived her life. At 4.30 every single day, mom would go up and do what she called, I'm going to go freshen up for your dad, meaning her Francis. She'd go up, wash her face, put on a little lipstick, some blush, comb her hair, put on a different shirt, and come down and look as though she had done nothing the entire day. Now, the only time I ever saw my mother sit down during the day was for lunch, and if she was sitting down at any other time, it only meant one thing. She was pregnant again. 
So here she is, comes down, gets dinner ready, and when Dad came in, there was always a tray of cheese and crackers, and in the winter, it was a scotch and water, in the summer, gin and tonic, and on a really bad week, it was a straight-up dry martini. <laughs> and they would sit side by side in the kitchen and talk for the first 30 to 45 minutes that Dad came home. And the kids, we knew that was their precious time. Do not interrupt unless somebody is dying. So we stayed away. They made that time for one another every single day of the 50 years they were married. Are you making that special time for people in your life? Are you taking the time to connect? Or are you just off being busy? When it came to respect, I always think about what mom didn't say. And one of the things that mom never said, I never heard, and you would think you would in a family of 12, was you should be more like your sister, you should be more like your brother. Because she knew what we would hear is, you are not good enough as you are, you need to be somebody else. So she never said that. She knew that each one of us was a unique individual, and she treated us as such. Some of them needed more room to fly, Others of us needed to be held closer, and that she did. She helped celebrate our, success, our successes all of the time. And when we were faced with failure and disappointment, she helped us to move forward in that disappointment. Hear what I said. She helped us move forward. She didn't try to shield us. She didn't try to make excuses. She didn't try to take and put the responsibility on somebody else. She helped us to move forward. She knew that success, failure, and disappointment were key components for us to learn to become healthy adult individuals. As I grew up and I started to have my own children and watch them making these really <coughs> stupid decisions in their life, I would call her and say, Mom, how did you do it? Because she never gave her opinion on anything unless it was asked. And she'd say, how did I do what? I said, how did you keep your mouth shut all those years? And she said, you should see the holes in my tongue from biting it. And then when you think about love, mom was not a real affectionate, huggy, kissy kind of person. We were not permitted or invited to like hang all over her. But who would want that after raising 12 kids? She had enough of hanging on her and <laughs> hugging and kissing. She showed us, though, by her actions every single day that she loved us. Now think about this. This woman in 50 years did 93,500 tubs of wash. She cooked 255,500 dinners. She cooked 10,000 pounds of turkey and ham for Thanksgiving celebrations and Christmas celebrations. She went up and down those stairs on the back of the house 326,000 times, and I can guarantee you most of those times there was a laundry basket attached to her or a kid. And somebody, she changed 26,000 sets of sheets, and yes, 12 kids had poopy pants a lot. 100,000 diapers changed and washed. Understand they were washed. They didn't have disposables back in those days. She showed us her love through her actions every single minute. She never complained. She never asked for anything in return. But she got in return in abundance because in her later years, her kids came and served her. We took care of her so she did not have to go to an assisted living facility. She didn't have to go to a nursing home. She was allowed to die peacefully at home, surrounded by eight out of 12 of her children. Now, there is an after story for this. See, because mom couldn't let things be. About two months after she passed away, the girl across the street from my sister was having a party. And they had invited a medium to come and visit. And the medium came in and said, who's Brian? Nobody knew. Well, who's Kathy? And all of a sudden, the girl across the street put it together. She said, Kathy O'Brien lives across the street. She said, well, I don't know what the relationship is, but Kathy O'Brien's mother is here. And Kathy's mom says, she's OK. Tell Kathy and the sisters, it's OK. They can move on. I'm good. And man, I have never seen a party like the one that's going on up there with her. It's crazy what's going on. And mom said, she's sorry she waited so long to go. My younger sister couldn't be outdone by that, so she had to actually proactively contact the medium. And what I will tell you is that the, that medium also said, that's one heck of a party they're having up there, and proceeded to name 
all the people that had been important in my mother's life. So she still continued to watch over us and give us her funny lines, even from heaven. She taught me, again, patience, a sense of humor, commitment, respect, and how to show people that you love them. And as I said, it's been 324 days, 8,496 hours, 509,760 minutes. I still miss her every day, and I'm still waiting for the call.